In this video, we're going to use the Mesh Combine tool. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to take a look at this AMG spoiler that we did in a previous Forms Mastery video. And we're going to talk about Mesh Combine. Now, there was a comment that was asking for me to do this, and I mentioned it in the video, but I didn't go down that route. So I want to talk about that a bit more. But first, some disclaimers. One, I cannot share this data set. It was provided to me. I don't know where the car model came from, so I don't feel comfortable sharing. But you will still be able to follow along with the process if you have your own mesh bodies. Second, this car appears to have been modeled, and it is not the original CAD file from the manufacturer. With that, it's very important that you don't use this sort of data to produce physical parts. Now, if you have a mesh scan, that's a different story. But if you're dealing with a car that was modeled based on blueprints and images, while it might look really close, there's probably going to be some differences and you're not gonna get an exact fit for your parts. So with those disclaimers out of the way, let's jump in. So the first thing I should say or note is that the body that we have here was designed as a form. As soon as we convert it to a mesh, that's destructive. So the first thing that I wanna do is create a copy of it just in case I want that solid body still. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select either move copy, which will allow us to create a copy or just simply copy and paste. You can of course use your shortcut keys, control C and control V on a Windows PC. For me, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the right click menu. You see here that we could have just used move copy and you have to select the create copy checkbox. But in this case, since we're pasting it, we're just gonna say, okay. I'm gonna hide body one and I'm gonna take body two and I'm gonna move it. So I wanna select move bodies, select this, and I'm just gonna move it inward and downward just to make sure that I have overlap so that this example works well. You can see now very clearly that there is some major overlap between the spoiler and the car itself. So we're gonna say, okay. And now that we know those two overlap, I'm gonna go into my mesh tools. We're gonna to select tessellate and we're gonna pick the solid body we wanna convert. Now there are a couple of things that we should note here. The first one is that we have refinement levels. Those refinement levels will determine how many mesh elements we have. If you happen to know the mesh elements on the design that you're working with, in this case, the car body, if you know the rough size of those in the area you're subtracting, you can work on some of those values and get it pretty close. You can also turn on the preview to get a good idea of the mesh resolution. We can see here that we have got way too many mesh elements compared to the car. So I'm gonna to go to a low refinement and that gets us a little bit closer. We can also go to custom and we can modify this based on surface deviation, normal deviation, maximum edge length, and if we reduce these values, you can see that it's gonna increase or decrease the mesh elements. For this example, I'm gonna simply use low and I'm gonna say, okay. Last note before I do click that, there is a create quads option, which will try to create quad mesh elements instead of triangles. But since the car that we're referencing has triangle mesh elements, it, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make a difference. All right, note that the body was consumed. It's now a mesh element. We do have history, so we could always delete and undo that, but we do still have the original B-Wrap, that solid body, and we do have the new mesh body. Now that we have this, we can use the Modify Combine tool. The target body is gonna be our spoiler. We wanna remove mesh elements from there, and the tool body is gonna be the trunk of the car. In this case, the entire car is an entire mesh body, which is gonna increase the calculation times, but that's okay. We then need to choose which operation we want. Join, intersect, cut, or merge. Notice the difference between join and merge. Merge will keep both mesh bodies, their boundaries, and, and it'll simply combine them into one mesh body. Whereas join will actually get rid of the intersection between them. For us, we wanna use cut. We can create a new component if we want, we can keep the tools if we want, we can preview if you want, but honestly, all of these are going to add more time to the calculation. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna let it think about this. It might take quite a while, depending on the number of mesh elements you have on the body you're removing from and the number of mesh elements on the body you're using as the cut tool. You can see that Fusion has gone into the sort of black background browser, and that's because the browser and dialogues 
get rendered out differently in the program than the entire canvas. That's why sometimes when the calculation times get really high, you'll see that those go black. Let this crank for a few minutes. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. Hopefully it only takes a few seconds, but we'll check back in once it's done. All right, so we're back and that took probably close to a minute and you'll notice that the car is gone. And that's because I didn't choose keep tools. The car was the tool body. So if you ever wanna go back and fix or undo that, what you can do is go back and edit that feature because we do have parametric timeline control over these features. So you'll notice that a lot of these sort of mesh elements were left behind and they're all gonna be part of that one mesh body. So if we hide it, you can see that they all disappear and now they all come back. So this can be problematic and it could be a result depending on the input mesh that you have. If you have a clean mesh to start with, then that's fine. But if you have things like an entire car and you're using that, that's when you can start to really run into some problems. In order to fix this, you have to go into direct editing. You have to pick the body and then you can start manipulating this and sort of box select all the elements you wanna get rid of. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change our selection tool to window selection. I'm gonna box select these and then just hit delete. And you'll have to do this a couple times depending on your settings for things like uh, looking through other mesh elements. You might need to rotate your view but ultimately what we're trying to do is clean this up. There are other ways that we can do this. There are some ways to separate the mesh. So for example, you can separate the mesh bodies that are independent. We can select that. We can say, okay. And then if we take a look at our bodies folder, what we should see is a lot of different mesh bodies. We wanna isolate the one that is the, the spoiler that we wanna keep. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna find all of the other mesh bodies that we want. It's gonna be hundreds of them probably, so we can scroll all the way down. We're gonna hold down Shift to select the bottom one, right click, and then we're gonna delete them. Remember, we're in direct editing right now, which means that there is no history. So that's one quick way that we can clean that up by separating it. Then we'll finish direct editing, and now we have the mesh body here, we have these other mesh bodies, these other mesh elements, but we're left with a nice clean spoiler that we don't have to deal with all those little empty fragments. There are some potential issues with this and you can see based on the mesh element size of the car and the mesh element size of the spoiler, we're having some potential issues around the edges. If you run into this, then some more mesh manipulation is probably needed. We can remesh the entire object but we wanna preserve sharp edges and boundaries, and we wanna preview this. So this is going to remesh in a triangular fashion using adaptive, and adaptive is going to give us higher mesh element counts where the curvature is higher, so we can increase or decrease the density to better match the shape that we're working with. So again, if your goal is to 3D print this, you might need to spend a little time playing around with remeshing just to make sure that you have a nice, clean, consistent mesh and you don't have large elements here and then smaller elements there. Uh, most of the time it would be okay, but some areas might cause problems with things like uh, slicers if you go to actually 3D print this. So you can see that we might need to do some cleanup in an area like this or that. But that's the general process. If you have a mesh, either a scan or a mesh body that you want to use in a combine, a Boolean operation to remove it, then that's the general process. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.